Okay, so let's jump into this video and start talking about our starting fuel and ignition trims. Now, when we go to fire per engine, we're gonna have an order of operations that the hull tech is gonna be applying to allow the engine to start up. We're gonna be finding we have a prime table, then a cranking table, then a post-start fuel table, and then a warm-up enrichment table. Now, we're also gonna be finding for ignition, we're gonna have a cranking and then a post-start ignition trim. So all of these tables are gonna be working together to allow our engine to fire up. So if we don't get one of the tables correct, we're gonna be finding it either doesn't wanna crank and fire or when it fires up, it wants to die or it wants to run really rich or really lean when it fires off and after it starts to run a bit. So we wanna make sure this is all right. We wanna understand how to work with all these tables. So I'm gonna be showing you how all of it works in this video. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check it out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our starting fuel and ignition trims in our Haltech Elite software. So before we begin doing any kind of actual tuning, for our cranking fuel and ignition timing. We have to understand that there's an order of operations in the Haltech ECU. We're gonna be finding if we move under our ECU navigator here, looking at our fuel and ignition timing, we're gonna be finding we have our base tables. This is our base VE table and I'm in volumetric efficiency style calculation in this particular video here. And I'm gonna be finding that I have my base ignition timing table. That's gonna be my main spark timing. Now in conjunction to these tables, when we go to fire off the engine, we have to provide an extra fuel above and beyond what's on this table or the engine simply won't fire off. That's especially true when the engine's cold. We're gonna be finding it needs a lot more fuel because we have a wall wetting effect occurring where when we spray fuel, it's gonna be sticking to the intake tracks and to the intake valve. That's not gonna get into the engine very efficiently. So we have to make sure that we compensate for that and overcome the wall wetting effect because we don't have good atomization when we have colder air inside the intake ports. So we're gonna be finding, we're gonna be using a prime pulse, a cranking, post-start correction, and then a coolant temp correction table. All of these tables are gonna be working with each other in different order. So we have to understand how each works and what role each plays in our starting. It's very, very important. Um, if you don't understand this, you're simply gonna be going in and changing values and tables, and it may not be doing what you want it to do because you may not understand how everything works here. We're gonna be finding the same is gonna hold true for ignition timing. We're gonna be finding we have a cranking table and a post-start correction table that we have to understand as well. So all of this is gonna play a role in our starting. So the very first thing that we need to do to begin to try to understand how to tune this is to create a custom page. Now we found here um, in our previous videos, we looked at the VE fuel tuning or the injection time or the mass airflow based fuel strategies. We created a custom page here that allows us to see and expose all of the relevant data in order to tune our fuel table. So we're gonna be doing the same for our starting so we can line everything up and make sense of everything. So when we go to try to work with all these tables, we can see where the trims and the corrections are coming from so that we can most efficiently go in and go in uh, and change the table that's associated with that particular point of the engines running. So whether it's coming from our initial crank to when it's actually cranking longer term to when it fires off and then finally when it's warming up and coming up and working to into our main fuel table exclusively. So let's jump in here and create this custom page. So we're gonna go to view, we're gonna go here to create new page. We're gonna be labeling this starting. So we know that it's gonna be just used for a task of starting fuel and ignition timing. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is right click, go in here to our text view. I'm gonna bring this down here and we're gonna be using a text view um, in this to expose the tables when we want to click on these. We're going to be bringing them in here. Now the next thing we're going to be doing is going in and adding all of our number displays. We can bring those all up on the top and the sides here. We're going to have a lot of information that we want to keep eye on and uh, keep track of what's going on here. So let's go ahead and minimize my table here. I'm going to right click, select channel. First channel is going to be RPM. We want to know what our engine RPM is doing when we're cranking. We'll do the same thing, number display. Let's go ahead and we're going to create another number display here, right click, select channel. This one we're gonna be going under throttle position. So we're gonna be looking at our TPS. We wanna see what that's doing. We wanna make sure that our throttle is closed and our cranking. Next, we'll right click number display. We're gonna be doing the same thing again here. And this time we're gonna be looking for our manifold air pressure or map sensor. We wanna see what that is doing. Type in map, click okay. Next, right click number display. We're gonna be looking at our ignition angle. We want to know what our ignition timing is doing. It's very important um, when we're looking at our zero demand 
and post our correction table, we're gonna be able to see what the ignition timing is doing here. So let's select channel and we're gonna be typing in ignition or IGN. We go 